If you already have a Steam Deck, then you probably know that this device works amazing just right out of the box. You don't really need to tweak any extra settings or download any external plugins, which is the main reason why this has become my favorite gadget of all time. But in this video, I want to show you some more advanced tips and customizations so that you can get your Steam Deck running at the peak performance or just to make it look cool. So let's start with tip number one, and that's customizing the performance settings. The Steam Deck OLED already has great battery life, but did you know that you can adjust the settings on the Steam Deck so that you can consume less power and play games longer and that's by adjusting the TDP or thermal design power. TDP is basically the maximum amount of heat that the Steam Deck components will output and it's measured in watts. By lowering the TDP you're telling the Steam Deck to use less power in order to not exceed that maximum heat threshold and by doing so you can increase the battery life of your Steam Deck at the cost of performance. So in order to adjust the TDP you're going to want to press the settings button on your Steam Deck, scroll down to this little lightning bolt icon which is performance, Go to advanced view and then you'll see a bunch of options here. Scroll down and you'll see TDP limit and you want to turn this on. And you can set this from anywhere between 3 watts and 15 watts. And that's it. Now since you are sacrificing a bit of performance by enabling this, it's much better with games that don't have high graphics like 2D games or emulated games. Another way to increase the battery life of your Steam Deck is with frame limiting. By setting a cap to your frame rate, you're basically telling the Steam Deck to run games at a specific target like 30, 60, or 90 FPS. To set a frame limit, you want to go back to that same performance settings menu and scroll up until you find frame limit. And here is the scroll bar where you can drag and drop and select any frame limit that you want for your Steam Deck. And let's say you're playing a game that has spikes in its frame rate and is never consistent. Well, by enabling this feature of frame limiting, you can not only save battery life for that game, but it'll also run a lot more smoothly since you're running at a constant frame rate. But you do have to make sure to choose a frame rate that makes sense for whatever game you're playing. Now, one last way that you can tweak the performance settings of your Steam Deck is with FSR or Fidelity FX Super Resolution. This one is a bit more complicated, but basically FSR allows you to upscale games that are running at a lower resolution so that they appear to be running at the higher or native resolution of the Steam Deck. Now some games have their own FSR setting built in, and if so, you should definitely be using that because it will give you a better performance and battery life. But if it doesn't, then this is the way you set it up on the Steam Deck. So in order to enable the Steam Deck's FSR, you wanna have a game running. I have Hades running right now. Click the settings button and go to the performance advanced settings, scroll all the way down until you see scaling filter. You wanna change this all the way to, it says FSR. Then you're gonna to wanna to go to the in-game settings for whatever game you're playing and change the display resolution to something lower than the Steam Deck's native resolution. As you can see right now, I have it at the native resolution and we're gonna turn it down all the way to this lowest point and it's gonna restart the game. And that's pretty much it. So here's me playing the game with FSR enabled on the Steam Deck. And honestly, we didn't lose too much quality here. I'm, I'm really liking this. Since you're technically running the game at a lower resolution, you will get better battery life out of the Steam Deck. And sometimes you can get a higher frame rate as well. All right, moving on to tip number two, and that's game compatibility and optimization. So many of you already know this, but the Steam Deck uses a compatibility layer called Proton in order to run Windows games on the Steam OS, which is a Linux-based operation system. But what you may not know is that there are so many different versions of Proton and some of them run specific games better than others. So if you want to use a specific version of Proton for any game, just go to that game's homepage, which you have downloaded already on your Steam Deck, and then go to the settings button here. You want to scroll down to properties, go to compatibility, and select force the use of specific Steam Play compatibility tool. And here is where you can select whichever Proton version that may work best for that game. If you're having trouble running a specific game, you can check out Reddit or the Steam community to see what exact configurations are they using and which exact Proton version are they using in order to get the game to run its best. Now moving on to tip number three, and that's custom controller configurations. Now, another thing I love about the Steam Deck is that they've added so many buttons and touchpads to give gamers a variety of options when it comes to getting the best, most comfortable gaming experience. Now, you might've noticed that my back buttons look a lot different than normal, and that's because I've added these attachments in order to make my fingers hit the buttons a lot more easily so I have a more comfortable gaming experience. And I'll make sure to leave these attachments in the description, so check them out if you want to. So in order to customize your button layout, you just go to whatever your game you're playing. As you can see, I've been playing a lot of Hades, and you click this controller icon on the right here, and it'll take you to the custom button layout screen, where you can view the layout, edit the layout, set your back buttons, do a lot of stuff here. And if you're really not sure what button layout to use for a specific game, you can click this top option here, go all the way to the right and see community layouts. Now these are now these are button configurations that the Steam community has made and you can try them out and see if they work for you. 
As a bonus tip, I highly recommend using the gyro controls, especially for FPS games. And I didn't even know this existed before, but it's made aiming on the Steam Deck so much easier. When I'm making large aim adjustments, I still use the sticks as normal, but when I need something more precise, I use the gyro controls in order to compensate for those smaller movements. Moving on to tip number four, we have overlays and monitoring. Now with all of the different ways to tweak the settings of your Steam Deck, you're probably wondering, is there a way I can even monitor what performance that I'm getting? And luckily, there is. Using the performance overlay on your Steam Deck can show you a lot of useful information like frame rate, battery consumption, and CPU and GPU usage. To get to the performance overlay, all you need to do is press the settings button in whatever game you're playing, scroll all the way to the top here, and you'll see performance overlay level. Right now I have this set to one, which is why you can see only the frame rate in the top left corner here. But if I set it all the way to four, I get a lot of information here like CPU and GPU usage, RAM, battery life, frame rate, you name it, anything's here. I really like that they added this feature to the Steam Deck itself and you don't need to download any external plugins or anything like that. And lastly, tip number five, we're gonna get into modding and customization. If you wanna make your Steam Deck feel more personal and change up the UI a little bit, you can download custom themes for the Steam OS interface. So in order to download custom themes for your Steam Deck, you're gonna need a plugin called Decky. Now I'll leave a link in the description on where and how to download Decky. It's super easy and free, so don't worry about that. Decky is pretty much like a plugin manager for your Steam Deck and it has a bunch of awesome plugins. Maybe I'll make a video on that in the future but I'll leave a link in the description on how and where to download Decky for now. Once you have that installed, you're gonna have a new icon in your settings menu on your Steam Deck here. And it's gonna look like a little plug, you see? And once you have that, that's Decky. And you can go to the Decky store, which is this icon in the top right here, and you can see all of the plugins that are available for your Steam Deck. The plugin that you wanna look for is called CSS Loader. This is the plugin that you need in order to get custom themes on your Steam Deck. Once you have that installed using Decky, you're gonna to wanna to click it and then go to this top right icon here to download themes. Once you press that button, you wanna to go to all themes and you can see here all of the different themes that users have created for the Steam Deck. All you gotta do is select one, it's free, download it, then go back to Decky, go back to the CSS loader and make sure to enable your theme. Right now I have the Obsidian theme, which is basically just like a dark theme for the Steam Deck. I really like it, it's minimal. As you can see here, let me go back out to the home screen. My background is black, all of my menus are black. I really like it here, but there are many other crazy ones, so go nuts and choose whatever you like. And lastly, if you wanna get into modding games just like you can do on a desktop gaming PC, you can do that on the Steam Deck as well. All you have to do is download tools like Mod Organizer 2 or Vortex to be able to manage mods on the games that support them. Now this is an area that I haven't explored too much yet and maybe I'll make a future video on this, but for now I'll leave a link in the description on how to download Mod Organizer 2 on the Steam Deck. And that's all the tips and tricks that I have for this video, but if you think that I've missed something, make sure to leave a comment below and I'll make sure to check it out. And if you've watched all the way up until this point, I just want to say thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to leave a like and a subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.